Timeline of the SARS Outbreak The following is a timeline of the 2002-2004 outbreak of Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome SARS. November 2002 On November 16, 2002, an outbreak of Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome SARS, began in China's Guangdong Province, bordering Hong Kong. A farmer in the Shunda district of Foshan County was likely the first case of infection. The People's Republic of China notified the World Health Organization WHO, about this outbreak on February 10, 2003, reporting 305 cases including 105 healthcare workers and 5 deaths. Later it reported that the outbreak in Guangdong had peaked in mid-February 2003. However, this appears to have been false because subsequently 806 cases of infection and 34 deaths were reported. Early in the epidemic, the Chinese government discouraged its press from reporting on SARS, delayed reporting to WHO, and initially did not provide information to Chinese outside Guangdong province, where the disease is believed to have originated. Also, a WHO team that traveled to Beijing was not allowed to visit Guangdong province for several weeks. This resulted in international criticism, which seems to have led to a change in government policy in early April. January 2003 the first super-spreader, Joe Zufin, a fishmonger, checked into the Sun Yat Senator Memorial Hospital in Guangzhou on January 31, where he infected 30 nurses and doctors. The virus soon spread to nearby hospitals. February 2003 Hong Kong In February 2003, Hong Kong's SARS index patient was Dr. Lu Jian Lun, who had come to attend a family wedding gathering. Dr. Liu was on the staff at Sun Yat Senator Memorial Hospital in Guangdong and had treated SARS patients. On February 21, Dr. Liu and his wife checked into room 911 on the ninth floor of the Metropole Hotel. Despite feeling ill he visited with his family and they traveled around Hong Kong. By the morning of February 22, he knew he was very sick and walked to nearby Kuang Wah Hospital to seek treatment. He warned staff that he was very sick and to put him in isolation. Doubt he never recovered and died in the intensive care unit on March 4. Dr. Liu is believed to have been a SARS super spreader. 23 other Metropoli guests developed SARS, including seven from the ninth floor. Liu's brother in law, who sought treatment in late February, was hospitalized in Tuang Hua Hospital on March 1 and died on March 19. It is estimated that around 80% of the Hong Kong cases were due to Liu. Vietnam the virus was carried to Hanoi, Vietnam by Chinese-American Johnny Chen, a resident of Shanghai who had roomed across the hall from Liu at the Metropole. He was admitted to the French Hospital of Hanoi on February 26, where he infected at least 38 members of the staff. Even though he was evacuated to Hong Kong, he died on March 13. Dr. Carlo Urbani, a WHO infectious disease specialist, was among the staff who examined Chen. Urbani observed that other hospital staff were already falling ill and realized that he was dealing with a new and dangerous disease. He himself became infected and died on March 29. Canada On February 23, elderly lady Kwan Sui Chu, another Metropoli Hotel guest, returned to Toronto from Hong Kong. She died at home on March 5, after infecting her son Si Chi Kwai, who subsequently spread the disease to Scarborough Grace Hospital and died on March 13. Taiwan. On February 25, a businessman who had traveled to Hong Kong and Guangdong province returned home to Taipei, marking the beginning of the outbreak on Taiwan. Almost all of those infected were either medical staff or family members of persons who had fallen ill. It is believed that the affected medical staff were unaware of the risks and were not using respiratory precautions such as masks, a safety protocol intended to protect medical workers from highly contagious diseases. March 2003 Singapore. On March 1, 26-year-old Esther Mock, another Metropoli guest, was admitted to Tan Tok Seng Hospital after visiting Hong Kong, starting the outbreak in Singapore. Although she recovered, various family members did not. Hong Kong. On March 4, a 27-year-old man, who had visited a guest on the Metropole's ninth floor 11 days earlier, was admitted to Hong Kong's Prince of Wales Hospital. At least 99 hospital workers, including 17 medical students, were infected while treating him. Thailand On March 11, Dr. Carlo Urbani traveled to Bangkok, Thailand to attend a medical conference. He fell ill during the flight and told a friend waiting at Bangkok not to touch him, to call an ambulance and take him to a hospital. 
he was isolated in an intensive care unit. A similar outbreak of a mysterious respiratory infection was reported among Hong Kong healthcare workers. On March 12, WHO issued a global alert about a new infectious disease of unknown origin in both Vietnam and Hong Kong. On March 15, WHO issued a heightened global health alert about a mysterious pneumonia with a case definition of SARS after cases in Singapore and Canada were also identified. The alert included a rare emergency travel advisory to international travelers, healthcare professionals, and health authorities. The Center for Disease Control CDC, issued a travel advisory stating that persons considering travel to the affected areas in Asia, Hong Kong, Singapore, Vietnam, and China, should not go. On March 17, an international network of 11 laboratories was established to determine the cause of SARS and develop potential treatments. The CDC held its first briefing on SARS and said that 14 suspected SARS cases were being investigated in the U.S. On March 20, WHO reported that several hospitals in Vietnam and Hong Kong were operating with half the usual staff because many workers stayed home out of fear of getting infected. WHO raised the concern that substandard care of the infected patients might contribute to the spread of the disease. On March 25, Hong Kong authorities stated that nine tourists had contracted the disease from a mainland Chinese man who had boarded the same plane on 15 March, Air China Flight 112 to Beijing. SARS started to hit Amoy Gardens blocky heavily. The Singapore government started to enforce compulsory quarantine of any infected person. On March 27, Arthur K. C. Lee, head of the Hong Kong Education and Manpower Bureau, announced cancellation of all classes in educational institutions. The Ministry of Education of Singapore announced that all primary schools, secondary schools, and junior colleges were to be shut until April 6, 2003. Polytechnics and universities were not affected. On March 29, Dr. Urbani died in Bangkok of a massive heart attack. On March 30, Hong Kong authorities quarantined the state of the Amoy Gardens housing estate due to a massive, 200-plus cases, outbreak in the building. The balcony was completely closed and guarded by the police. The residents of the building were later transferred to the quarantine Le Yue Moon Holiday Camp and Lady Mikkelho's Holiday Village on April 1 because the building was deemed a health hazard. Most of the cases were linked to apartments with a northwestern orientation which shared the same sewage pipe. According to government officials, the virus was brought into the estate by an infected kidney patient, the type of kidney illness was not specified, after discharge from Prince of Wales Hospital who visited his elder brother living on the seventh floor. Through excretion, the virus spread through drainage. One theory speculated that the virus was spread by airborne transmission, through dried up U-shaped P-traps in the drainage system which a maritime breeze blew into the estate's balconies and stairwell ventilation. It was confirmed that the virus spread via droplets, but this later outbreak made officials question the possibility that the virus could be spread through the air. April 2003 On April 1, the U.S. government called back non-essential personnel in their consulate office in Hong Kong and Guangzhou. The U.S. government also advised U.S. citizens not to travel to the region. On April 2, Chinese medical officials began reporting the status of the SARS outbreak. China's southern Guangdong province reported 361 new infections and 9 new deaths, increasing the total mainland China figures previously reported at end February. The virus was also detected in Beijing and Shanghai. The WHO also advised travelers to avoid Hong Kong and Guangdong during a press briefing. On April 3, a WHO team of international scientists landed in Guangzhou from Beijing to discuss with officials, but the team was yet to inspect any suspected origin or any medical facilities on the progress of infection control. Fifteen of the quarantined Amoy Gardens residents at Lei Yue Moon Holiday Camp were relocated to the Sai Kung Outdoor Recreation Center after an overnight protest on washroom sharing. The first medical worker infected with SARS died in Hong Kong. The doctor's daughter and infected wife survived his illness, even though the wife was also among the quarantined medical workers under intensive care. Hong Kong school closures were extended by two weeks to April 21. On April 4, the WHO team inspected the first infection case in Foshan County. The male infected four people. But, he did not infect his family. A 40-year-old woman became the first local case in Shanghai. 
A Chinese health specialist admitted at a press conference of not informing the public early enough about the outbreak. The PRC health minister also claimed that the disease has been under control in most parts of mainland China. He also released the names of seven drugs which he claimed to be effective in curing SARS. WHO officials said that the information provided by the PRC about the disease has been very detailed. U.S. government enforced compulsory quarantine of an infected person. On April 5, the Singapore government announced that school closures would be extended. Junior colleges were to reopen on April 9, secondary schools would reopen on April 14 and primary schools and preschools would reopen on April 16. On April 6, a SARS case was found in Manila, a person who had returned from Hong Kong. On April 8, SARS started to plague the Lower Ngao Tau Coca State near Amoy Gardens in Kowloon. Hong Kong health officials warned that SARS had spread so far domestically and abroad that it was here to stay. Nevertheless, WHO officials remain cautiously optimistic that the disease could still be contained. On April 9, James Hurl Salisbury died of SARS at a hospital in Hong Kong. An American Mormon and a teacher at Shenzhen Polytechnic, he had been sick for approximately one month before his death but he was originally diagnosed with pneumonia. His son Michael Mickey Salisbury was with him in China and also contracted the disease, but he survived it. Salisbury's death led to more open admissions by the Chinese government about the spread of SARS. On April 10, Jim Hughes, the head of infectious disease at the CDC, confirming the warnings of Hong Kong health officials, claimed that he believed that SARS could no longer be eradicated in the Far East. However, he remained hopeful that it could be prevented from spreading widely in North America. On April 11, the World Health Organization issued a global health alert for SARS as it became clear the disease was being spread by global air travel. On April 12, Mark O'Mara, director of the Michael Smith Genome Sciences Center, which is part of the British Columbia Cancer Agency, announced that scientists at his center had broken the genetic code of the virus suspected of causing the disease. In Toronto, Three more people died of SARS, bringing the Canadian death toll to 13. On April 16, the WHO issued a press release stating that the coronavirus identified by a number of laboratories was the official cause of SARS. The virus was officially named the SARS virus. Doctors were surprised to discover the occurrence of at least two cases of SARS in Dinner, a village near Bangalore, India. Poor hygiene and a lack of adequate trash disposal seemed to have hastened the spread of the deadly disease. On April 19, Premier of the People's Republic of China Wen Jiabao announced that there would be severe consequences for local officials who do not report SARS cases in a timely and accurate manner, signaling a major change in policy. SARS had also been gaining prominence in the mainland Chinese media, by late April, it had jumped from virtual invisibility onto the front page, with daily reports from all provinces on new cases and measures. On April 20, Beijing's Mayor Meng Zhenong and the Health Minister of the PRC Zhang Wenkong were replaced respectively by Wang Qishan from Hainan and the former Deputy Health Minister Gao Chang. They were the first two high-rank officials in the PRC to be dismissed because of the fallout of the epidemic. In the news conference chaired by Gao Chang several hours earlier, the PRC admitted that in Beijing there were more than 300 cases, as opposed to the previous figure of only 37. One day later the figure had increased to 407. Chinese officials also admitted to major under-reporting of cases, which were attributed to bureaucratic ineptitude. On April 22, schools, in Hong Kong, started to reopen in stages. On April 23, Beijing announced that all primary and secondary schools would be closed for two weeks. A few days before, some colleges in Peking University had been closed because some students had been infected. The WHO issued travel advisories against Beijing, Toronto, and Shanxi Province. On April 25, Taipei City government closed Taipei Municipal Hospital Hoping Branch, and quarantined its 930 staff and 240 patients for two weeks. Later, people were relocated and the building sanitized. On April 24, the Hong Kong government announced an 11.8 billion Hong Kong dollars relief package designed to assist Hong Kong's battered tourism, entertainment, retail, and catering sectors consisting of a waiver of tourism and transport-related license fees, and 1 billion Hong Kong dollars allocated for tourism promotion overseas. The package also includes a salaries tax rebate and reduced rates. On April 26, Wu Yi was named Zhang Wenkong's replacement as PRC Health Minister. On April 26-27, 
Chinese authorities closed down theaters, discos, and other entertainment venues in Beijing as the death toll in Beijing continued to rise, threatening to become the worst hit area of the country, eclipsing the Guangdong province. Authorities were bolstered by the fact that the infection rate seemed to have declined, with the Guangdong region only exporting three new infections over the weekend. The economic impact was becoming dramatic as shops, restaurants, markets, bars, universities, schools, and many other businesses had closed, while some government ministries and large state banks were working with minimal staff levels. On April 28, WHO declared the outbreak in Vietnam to be over as no new cases were reported for 20 days. On April 29, leaders of member countries of ASEAN and the PRC Premier held an emergency summit in Bangkok, Thailand in order to address the SARS problem. Among the decisions made were the setting up of a ministerial-level task force and uniform pre-departure health screening in airports. On April 30, the World Health Organization lifted the SARS travel warning for Toronto. The decision was made because it is satisfied with local measures to stop the spread of SARS. Canadian officials said they would step up screenings at airports. May 2003 On May 3, the 2003 FIFA Women's World Cup was abruptly moved to the United States due to the outbreak. China maintained its automatic qualification and later hosted the Women's World Cup four years later. On May 4, the newly infected number of people in Hong Kong dropped to a single digit. On May 19, the WHO annual meeting was held in Geneva. Hong Kong pushed for the tourism warning to be lifted. On May 20, the WHO refused to lift the tourism warning for Hong Kong and Guangdong. On May 23, after a recount of the number of SARS patients, the WHO lifted the tourism warning from Hong Kong and Guangdong. On May 24, the number of newly infected patients reached zero for in Hong Kong, the first time since the outbreak in the territory in March. On May 24, a new cluster of about 20 suspected patients was reported in Toronto. By May 29, more than 7,000 people were instructed to quarantine themselves in Canada by authorities seeking to control the potential spread of the SARS outbreak. On May 31, Singapore was removed from WHO's list of infected areas. June 2003 On June 23, Hong Kong was removed from WHO's list of affected areas, while Toronto, Beijing, and Taiwan remained. On June 27, the World Health Organization stated that the world population should be SARS-free within the next two to three weeks, but warned the disease could emerge in China next winter. July 2003 On July 5, WHO declared the SARS outbreak contained and removed Taiwan from the list of affected areas. There had been no new cases for 20 days although around 200 people were still hospitalized with the disease. September 2003 On September 8, Singapore announced that a postdoctoral worker in a SARS research lab in the National University of Singapore had contracted the disease while working on the West Nile virus but recovered shortly thereafter. It was suspected that the two viruses mixed while he was doing his research. October-November 2003 The Hong Kong Harbor Fest was organized and held from 17 October to November 11, 2003 as part of an $1 billion Hong Kong dollars program to revive the economy of Hong Kong after the SARS. It was a government underwritten event organized by Invest HK, under the auspices of the Economic Relaunch Working Group, in collaboration with the American Chamber of Commerce. December 2003 On December 10, a researcher in a SARS lab in Taiwan was found infected with SARS after returning from Singapore attending a medical conference, 74 people in Singapore were quarantined but none of them was infected. On December 27, China announced the first suspected case of SARS in six months in Guangdong in an individual who was not a SARS researcher. January 2004 January 2, Shenzhen's bid for the 2009 summer universal aid was cancelled, and announced a bid for the 2011 summer universal aid by FISU. January 5, China confirmed that the case reported in December was a case of wild source SARS. The Philippines announced a possible case in a person just returned from Hong Kong. January 7, the Philippines announced that their possible SARS case was just pneumonia. In China, Asian palm civets were culled in markets, the civets were thought to be a reservoir for the disease. January 10, a restaurant worker in Guangdong was confirmed as the second wild source SARS since the outbreak was contained. Guangzhou was also the site of the first case in December and was thought to be the origin of the virus in the original outbreak.
Three Hong Kong television reporters who visited SARS-related sites in Guangzhou were declared free of the disease. January 17, China announced a third case of SARS in Guangzhou. WHO officials urged more testing to bring the three recently announced cases into line with their standards, however they also announced SARS virus had been detected by a WHO team in civet cages at the restaurant where the second case worked and in civet cages in the market. January 31, China announced the fourth case of SARS as a 40-year-old doctor from the southern city of Guangzhou, and gave his family name as Lu. He was discharged when the announcement was made. April 2004 SARS broke out again in Beijing and in Anhui province. On April 22, China announced that a 53-year-old woman had died on April 19, its first SARS death since June. One person died and nine were infected in the outbreak which was first reported on April 22. The first two infected cases involved a postgraduate student and a researcher at the National Institute for Viral Disease Control and Prevention, abbreviated, Institute of Virology, of the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention, an additional seven cases were diagnosed, which were linked with close personal contact with the student, the lab or with a nurse who treated the student. May 2004 May 1, two additional confirmed cases of SARS and three additional suspected cases were reported in Beijing, all related to a single research lab, the Diarrhea Virus Laboratory in the CDC's National Institute of Virology in Beijing. The cases had been linked to experiments using live and inactive SARS coronavirus in the CDC's Virology and Diarrhea Institutes where interdisciplinary research on the SARS virus was conducted. The total number of cases was six, with four in Beijing and two in Anhui province. May 2, China announced the three suspected cases as genuine cases of SARS, bringing the total cases in the recent outbreak to nine. 189 people were released from quarantine. May 18, as no new infections had been reported in a three-week period, WHO announced China as free of further cases of SARS, but with biosafety concerns remain. Subsequent Status Status of SARS as of May 15, 2005 In May 2005, Jim Yardley of the New York Times wrote, 5, Jim Yardley of the New York Times wrote, 5, Jim Yardley of the New York Times wrote, 5, 